Hugh Merriman. Thank the Honourable Member for Warrington North for uh, responding to the uh, e-petition. Um, I should like to declare an interest, Mrs Moon, in that I am the uh, Chairman of the All-Party Parliamentary Group uh, for the BBC, uh, a position I, I hold with great pride. Um, the BBC is a, a revered institution, uh, unique perhaps in the way that it is funded, uh, and I believe that we uh, should look upon it uh, as, as a blessing to this country that, that it exists in the manner it does. Uh, and an institution that we should really cherish, uh, hold dear, and do everything we can uh, to preserve. Um, and I think we should also be mindful that when it comes to the licence fee, uh, it works out to be around about 40 pence per day, which I believe is about the same price as a copy of The Sun. Uh, I leave the analogy uh, there. Um, as, as for replacing the licence fee... Um, as the Honourable Member makes, makes the point, it, it's certainly the case that whilst it's, it's an unusual way to fund um, a, 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 a media a producer of output in these particular days, it does appear to have um, support in terms of its model and indeed, as she mentioned, it, it appears to have increasing support. So whilst I, I recognise the points that it's a very unusual way to, to fund a media provider and that there's no particular choice if one wants to have a TV but not actually watch the BBC. I think in reality um, the bulk of the population do indeed uh, use BBC programming and therefore I would maintain its good value for money. I also believe that the BBC is incredibly important from a uh, position of social mobility, uh, an issue that I believe is, is, is even more um, of a challenge than it has been before. And the reality is for those young people who have access to the BBC. They have the access to the most extraordinary amount of information uh, and it may well be that they're not in the privileged position of their family being able to impart that knowledge and information. The very fact that they can use the BBC via the, via the web or indeed via uh, TV or radio to perhaps fill in some of the, the gaps uh, that they actually need uh, is something that we shouldn't lose sight of and I declare an interest in the sense that I sometimes feel that I lost some of my uh, education uh, along the way. Uh, and I certainly use the BBC to make up some of the gaps, and I probably wouldn't be here with that not the case. Some honourable members may take that to be uh, a downside of the BBC. Uh, <laughs> may, maybe, indeed, uh, a time to come, I, I will as well, but I, I do feel it's absolutely essential. Um, another good reason, and again, I, I would sort of advocate in terms of the licence fee, is what it actually does, what it allows the BBC to do for us as a nation around the world. Uh, I believe 372 million people across the globe each week tune into the BBC, the bulk of those through the BBC World Service. Um, that perhaps allows us to play a pivotal role around the world uh, for, the, for, the, for the sort of message from Britain to be carried uh, and for those around the world to actually look favourably towards Britain as a result of informing uh, and educating and enlightening people around the world. Uh, of course, sorry, I, I didn't see. I will give way. Thanks, Julie. Thank you. Would the member agree with me that while other means might become available in future. The licence fee, as he describes, has been fundamental to the success and the respect in which the BBC has held worldwide. And to abandon it could undermine the quality, the range of programming, everything from Mrs Brown's Boys to the Blue Planet, and put in jeopardy a valuable platform for new talent. Yeah. Hugh Merriman. Yeah, I, I, I very much take that point, albeit perhaps with one caveat. I'm not sure Mrs. Brown's <laughs> voice would be, would be my, my absolute choice. But, but range, indeed. But that's the whole point. We all actually have our favourites. I, perhaps I'd throw in line of duty as being, being yeah, worth yeah, yeah, the, uh, yeah, yeah. the licence fee on its own. But uh, the Honourable Lady's absolutely right. So I think as soon as you start going down the road of a different model, then all of a sudden those influences in terms of output will absolutely be there. And you need to keep a high watermark in terms of that model. Uh, and that universal model, I think, works very well and allows the BBC to explain why some of its output may not be the most popular, uh, but actually it's exactly why everyone is actually paying for it, because collectively there's something on there for absolutely everybody, even for those who love Mrs Brown's boys. Um, but I, I, I also believe um, that it's unfortunate that the BBC, because of its unique situation, can perhaps get attacked from all sides uh, with regard to political bias when it comes to elections and the referendum now. Um, I, I make that distinction between ordinary times and elections and referenda. I, th I think the BBC um, tries to play a very straight bat when it comes to elections. It's on a sort of heightened sense of trying to be fair to all. 
Um, and I believe when, when politicians, and perhaps I think we all have to level, um, our antennae is not necessarily uh, tuned into neutrality. Uh, when we find that one thing in particular may actually grate with us, we tend to, to pillory the, the BBC uh, for so doing. I will, however, just sort of put one caveat to that, because I referenced during elections and referendum, where I think the BBC is on a heightened sense of alert. I do think it's fair to say, and I hope from being incredibly supportive of the BBC, that this can be taken in a, as a positive improvement point. Uh, that the BBC perhaps needs to pay more attention, now that it's in the business of seven-day, 24-hour rolling news in particular, uh, to be very careful with its content. I think particularly with its presenters, who increasingly are moving more towards being commentators. And I think in so doing, there is the unfortunate perception of that one lone voice perhaps leaving um, a, a message that perhaps hadn't been intended. And I think if the BBC is going to move more towards the models of having um, those who commentate or provide analysis, then it needs to think very clearly as to whether they should have two guests on their show, making sure that they can actually put both sides of the argument rather than just what may seem as a throwaway remark, actually then leaving listeners uh, to view a position as in one particular way. And I think that's particularly the case, because as the Honourable Lady mentioned, I, I believe the figure was 57% of those who uh, listen to B or watch BBC News uh, trust the content. In that case, I think the BBC has an even greater duty to make sure that that content is neutral when they're presenting. I give way again. <clears throat> I, was only going to, I was only going to say that would the Honourable Member not agree that questions that we might have about BBC presentation are completely different from the principle that it's public funded and that not everyone has to pay the licence fee. If you don't want a television, you don't have to pay for the BBC, but that um, its journalism is respected worldwide. But as I say, that's a separate issue from the method of funding. The Honourable Lady arrived late and didn't hear the initial speech and has now made two interventions. I assume that will be her last for a while. Hugh I apologise, Mrs. Mill. I hadn't actually no noted that point my myself, so perhaps I shouldn't have taken interventions. But again, just, just to respond, I think it's making the point, sort of which, which I make gently to the BBC, um, that if it does have this level of trust, if it is in a unique position where people are going to give it this level of trust, then it needs to be very careful, and I recognise the challenges the BBC has, because there's now such a need to provide so much content that it is quite difficult to keep up. But I, mean, I myself noticed uh, a feature on, on Saturday morning where, on the Today programme, uh, and whilst I won't turn this into a debate on universal credit, I think the throwaway remark from the Today presenter was, another problem with universal credit. It then goes across to the presenter of Moneybox Live, who makes um, a particular point which actually lacked, certainly lacked the spirit of Lord Reith and also a lot of factual accuracy as well and then that's it and I think then that can actually lead the news stories people trust it in the manner we actually explained as well other news organizations feed from it and actually where there's no accuracy in that then I think that's particularly uh, an issue for the BBC and they need to get this right and I think that as I say other parties could make the exact same same point um, but th these are just the sort of improvement points I would I would make uh, I maintain um, that the BBC is 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 a unique institution um, and I understand the the the, the reasoning behind the petition. Um, but I absolutely believe that the majority of people in this country support the BBC, support the principle of the licence fee, and whilst it doesn't necessarily um, uh, accord to much logic, and were we to be inventing the process in 2017, would we do it? Maybe not. But actually, for me, that's one of the great reasons why we should continue as we do.